Hi, I'm Ruthie Collins. I'm an artist on Sidewalk Curb Records, and I've got a brand new single called Rambling Man coming out, and I'm a country singer-songwriter, and I'm so excited to be here at CRS 2015. Welcome. Thank you. Rambling Man, first thing I want to talk about yeah. is the story behind that song I'm really interested in, because some of the press material calls it a cover, but it's not a straight cover. You Absolutely. You just rehash the song. Right. Talk about that process. So, um, it's kind of funny. I, I knew, you know, my label was wanting something up-tempo, of course, right? So I, I was trying to write an up-tempo song that I didn't feel cheesy singing, and that's really where it started. Um, when I'm singing a happy song that's really happy and peppy, I just feel kind of cheesy. So I knew I wanted to, you know, release a single that had a little bit of depth and a little bit of that darkness in that, but still had the tempo that obviously we need to be commercial at Country Radio. So I had this idea. I just, I love all things old fashioned and vintage and I had this idea to take an old classic country song and make it new again. Um, so I was working with my producer Kurt Gibbs and we just sat down and we were actually in the middle of a writing session and when this idea came to me I, we just had to stop everything because I was like I, we have to do this right now before somebody else does because I know how we can do this and I can't think about anything else. So I became really obsessed with the idea and instantly I knew I wanted it be, to be a Hank Williams song um, and especially Ramblin' Man because he just has that kind of like dark yodel in the original that just really drew me in. Um, so we we got ourselves an up-tempo beat and I just started playing guitar to it and um, we put his little I love you baby in. I kind of thought that we would sample um, the hook, you know, when the Lord made me, he made a Ramblin' Man. That's what you would normally do. But when we were listening down and I heard him do that I love you baby thing, it just it sounded like my boyfriend talking to me or something. You know, it sounded like some guy just talking to his girlfriend. And I was like, wait, let's just take that little snippet, put that in. We put in a pedal steel um, lick from the original. And I just picked up my phone and Googled the lyrics and went up to the microphone and sang the whole thing down. And I have no idea where it came from, but it was a really cool moment. You know, it was really one of those like... I don't know why this just happened, but um, so it's totally different from the original. It's a brand new melody, um, obviously sung by a female, different chords, different structure. Um, I even had to change the lyrics in a couple little places just for rhyming, you know, when he would say I, and I had to end it with he. So, but um, I'm so proud to sing a Hank Williams song, and I just, I love the way it turned out. But it was a really crazy, unexpected experience for sure. It sounds like a very authentic experience, too, mm -hmm. where if you had planned it this way, it wouldn't I don't think all it, have come out I don't that think way. it ever would have come out that way. I don't think you could plan something like that because it's so dramatically different, which is when you say it's it's not a cover, you know, it really isn't. It's like a modern rendition, you know, um, but it's, it's very different. But, you know, and it was a little scary because it's Hank Williams and he's country music royalty, and I certainly did not want to do anything that would make traditionalists uneasy, you know, and I remember playing it for a couple friends are like really traditional country songwriters and have been in the business for a long time and that's the music that they adore and I remember them being like well that's just bluegrass I was like oh okay and then I'll play it for people who love pop music and they're like oh this is such a great pop song and I'm like well, okay that sounds like everybody's happy so it's good so the reaction you're getting is people essentially they get out of it what they like what they like yeah. like it connects with a, yeah. with a wide what's the response been and from from fans, like from from an audience, from listeners. Well, it's really interesting because I don't think a lot of people actually recognize the song. I've had very few people say, "Oh my gosh, I love that Hank Williams song." You know, and they kind of hear that it is a Hank Williams song, but they wouldn't necessarily recognize it because it is so different. But people, you know, it's so funny. Just like I said, the bluegrassers are like, "That's bluegrass, I love it." You know, and people who like dance music kind of get a little something in there for it. But um, the, the response has been really, really amazing. You know. Cool. It's been awesome. E, as I um, was reading through your bio, I was struck by the following sentence. I am drawn to things that speak of permanence. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing in the music industry. There's not. <laughs> um, but so I, I wonder how you, if that, that part of your personality is sometimes at odds with having to be in an industry that constantly changes. Changes all the time. I think so, you know, but um, music has been my one constant in my life since I was three years old. Um, it's always been what I wanted to do and what I was focused on. Um, so it is it is a sense of permanence for me, but, you know, I think that being, you know, I kind of, I get called an old soul a lot. That's sort of a weird thing to call yourself. It feels awkward. But um, I think, you know, I grew up on a, on a farm that's been in my family over 100 years, and my great-grandma and my grandma and my mom and I all grew up there, and those women really passed down 
um, a sense of keeping your past around you at all times. You know, I have paintings that my great grandmother purchased, you know, in my home. And um, I don't know if it's that that makes me feel close to them because they're so far away. Or, you know, I, I also think it's a lot to do with what you said, um, especially about the music business, but also just in life. Things change so quickly. We have this technology stuff that is always changing and you're always kind of pressured to feel like you have to have the latest and the greatest of everything and be kept up to speed with all the social media and all the latest cell phone stuff or whatever it is. And, and I think a lot of people feel like a little unbalanced by that, you know, um, and keeping these sort of vintage touches in your life almost makes me feel like, you get a little bit of that balance back, you know? So I think that's why a lot of people will wear vintage clothes or listen to old music or decorate with vintage furniture. It's like we can kind of control a little bit of our environment that way when we can't control where in the world this crazy, you know, world is going, you world know? Is yeah. Up. Yeah, and as we got to know each other before the interview, one of the comments I made was, I like how much control you are, you are retaining mm-hmm. over your own career. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how do you see that evolving? <laughs> um, well, maybe one day I won't do everything, but maybe not, you know? <laughs> um, I think, you know, for a long time as a female artist in Nashville, people ask you what makes you different. For a long time, I always just said, I've got great songs. And I really do believe that my songs are my strength. But we're in Nashville, Tennessee. Everybody has great songs, right? So I started to have to really think about what makes me different and what makes me stand out. And that is what I think females especially have to do. Well, everybody has to do it. But you have to find a way that makes it real and that is genuine to you. You just can't, I can't go just wear midriff tops because that'll make me stand out. I would feel like a weirdo, you know? So um, finding this way to bring in all this, this vintage touch and the branding that I loved just because that's who I am. You know, I like to have crafting parties with my girlfriends and I like to garden and cook. And, you know, one day I kind of realized, well, all those things are very country. They're very country women, you know? Um, And there's a lot of people out there that can relate to that. And all of a sudden it was like, well, I can just be interested in the things that I'm interested in, find a way to incorporate them into my music and kind of make that part of the whole experience and the lifestyle that goes along with it. But I mean, I am involved in everything, but I like it that way. You know, nobody else is inside an artist's head except the artist. So we're the only people who really know what it is that we want to put out to the world when it comes to us. I mean, you have to live your brand, you know? Um, So even like yesterday, we we had a show for a bunch of sales vendors and, um, you know, one of the guys at Curve Records was like, Ruthie, would you mind making 21 centerpieces for our show tomorrow? And I was like, I would love to. He's like, I feel really weird asking you that, but I know that then you'll think they're beautiful you probably would have fun. I was like, absolutely, you know. And so I got up at like 5 a.m. and was putting tulips in mason jars and tying them up with twine and burlap and lace. And, you know, I just, I love, I love doing all that stuff. And, and that's what I've really tried to do with Airstream is, um, you know, I renovated this 1975 Airstream and turned it into this vintage chic performance lounge. And what's so cool about that is not only do we have this ruling venue where we can take to anyone, you know, take anywhere, but you walk in the thing and you know who I am right away. You know, you, you're you walking into my brand. You're sitting in it you know so I would just really um, encourage people to figure out what makes them different and what is genuine to them you know and then go with it but what do you think is it about yourself because I think finding that sense of self is Mm -hmm. a struggle often Mm -hmm. a lifelong struggle for a lot of people what do you think is it about you either your upbringing or inspiration you get from other people or the artists things that have happened in your earlier life that make you have that sense of self well I'm not exactly sure what it is but I, I definitely grew up very young um, not in a bad way but just feel like I was living some you know real life experiences at a very young age and um, music was kind of the way that I dealt with that and um, I just I was going to figure it out. I was going to figure out how to make music my life story, whatever that meant. And, you know, once I realized that it takes more than just music, you know, that's really what I set my mind to. It became almost like, what do I have to do in order to have a music career? And it's it's these days, it is like that. It's like, well, do I have to be on a TV show in order to have a music career? Do I have to do this? You know, and, um, and I just set my sights on that. Um, but I'm not sure if there's one particular thing that kind of made me so focused I just I just knew that music was always it for me and I didn't want to do anything else and I was going to figure it out I'm one of those people who has a book of 
quotes and quotations and inspirational yeah. things that I keep. And as I was going through that a little while back and already knew that I wanted to speak with you, I came across a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote that I'd like to read you because I think you might resonate. Trying to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Mm. I love that. I, I feel like I just said that. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's what I mean. Like that's amazing. Is, that yeah. That is exactly what you what you did. That mm-hmm. comes out of your press material. It comes mm-hmm. out of your music. It comes out of every part of what the public sees about mm-hmm. you reflects you insisting yeah. that you stay yourself. Well, I can't be anybody else. You know what I mean? I... I'm never going to, I've, I've never been the super cool kid. Like, I'm just not going to be that. And if I tried, you wouldn't believe it, yeah. you know? So really finally the day come, when the day came that I was like, okay, like if I'm going to do this, I have to be me. I'm going to be silly and goofy. I'm going to stick my foot in my mouth. Um, I'm not going to sing like Martina McBride because I can't. That's not the way that I sound the best, you know, but I can find my sweet spot and I can be me. And if hopefully people can relate to that and hopefully it'll make them feel like they can do the same you know but that's a beautiful quote I love that I thought about you when I read that and the the thing that I also notice about you is you're just surrounded by a really strong team Mm -hmm. absolutely the songwriter you are and the performer you are and have all these things but if it's not the right people supporting you well, it might still not you're really absolutely job. right and you know a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about is all good and well but the fact that Curb Records and Sidewalk has really let me take control over this project and has said that's a great idea yes let's go do that yeah you know we can do that here's how we can help you do that and you know from the branding to even you know the CEO really helping me find the best way to produce my vocals I mean just all across the board they have been an amazing united front I'm so so lucky and you're right you're only as strong as the people that you surround yourself with so yeah it's been amazing yeah it's really great and I've been finishing with this question Mm -hmm. Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh my gosh. Um, Ashokan's Farewell, which is like this. Um, that's a really sad song to put on the soundtrack of my life. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a very happy person who writes really sad songs. So, um, gosh, what else? Um, Sweet, Baby J- Sweet Baby James by James Taylor. Um, Top of the World by Patty Griffin. Lots of sad stuff. Um, you know, I saw the light, probably. Um, I don't know, just classic songs that would be in my stereo in 40 years, hopefully, you know. Yeah. All right, I'm so glad we finally oh, got to. Oh, me too. This is so fun. Thank, Thank you. you.